Hey fellas, Frankie Day here. Okay guys, uh, again, long time no see. I've been much too busy guys between my job and and uh, outdoor events with my summer toys. I've been kind of waiting for the model event to still building. And uh, the topic of this video this evening is called Chopper Madness. I completed another chopper here fellas. It's a uh, Artillery uh, 172nd scale HU-16 Shawnee, and excuse me, H-21 Shawnee. I got that mixed up with the transporter. <laughs> I'll show you that too after we uh, review the, uh, the build here. Uh, this is the, um, I think I posted this on the last video along with my Choctaw. And um, so this thing is complete, it's all done, it's ready to, to be put away somewhere. And... Uh, and I got some other kits I'll show you I'll probably be doing next. I'll be on choppers for a while. <laughs> Believe it or not, fellas, I still haven't got the Alabama done yet. I got two I got two lifeboats to put on this thing. And it's all finished. I'm going to have so much fun outside with Mother Nature and my toys and uh, work on these choppers here. It's kind of kept me away from the uh, kept me away from Alabama. But I will get the video out for this thing as best as I can, guys. I'm really deeply sorry about that. I know I've been promising for that video, but I just... Uh, you know how it is, we get wound up in, in, uh, in, uh, in modeling subjects, you kind of get off base a little bit, so. We got winter coming up, so we got, we'll get the Alabama going, so I haven't, uh, I'll make sure you guys haven't forgotten that, and I know I haven't. Okay, guys, uh, this could be the final reveal of Chopper Madness of my 172nd scale of Tullery H21 Shawnee, or Virtual, or Flying Banana. And uh, this was a dandy of a kit. It wasn't too bad to put together. It's got a very beautiful terrier inside. And uh, this is painted as per kit schedule on here. Uh, first time I've built one of these before. I've seen, I seen a lot of them during my time when I was in the, uh, when I was growing up in the world. And uh, matter of fact, the H-21s, they got rid of those out uh, probably... By the time Vietnam was uh, sh shaken down, they were replaced with uh, Chinooks and uh, Hueys. And also Choctaws, seahorses. And uh, so this actually was one of the first uh, the Vetrals, uh, twin rotor designs used. It came out during the Korean War conflict. And as, as mentioned on the last video on, on the Choctaw, I remember when I was about 12, 13 years old teenager, young teenager, entering the world of puberty and uh, growing pimples. I heard a wop, 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 wop sound going from the distance. I've never seen a helicopter before, but I've seen one of these fly. I never knew what a helicopter was. Back in my days when I was young, tender and young, it was simple aircraft and jet aircraft were of our and uh, they so they I've pretty much seen a lot of the old nifty 50s machines post World war ii machines i've seen them come and seen them go but i've never seen a helicopter before until i've seen this h21 fly there's five of them flying in tandem probably about three four hundred feet off the ground very very low and i didn't know what that sound was the sound i have never heard before in my life when I seen these five choppers come up towards me, I never ran so fast. I tell you folks, if I was in the Olympics, I could probably be a 50-yard dash in about one, one, minute, one second. I was so darn fast. I got home, my mother was winded. My mother looked at me and said, man, what happened now? What would you do? I said, mom, there's something I've seen. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. They look like, I don't know what they are. They look like bugs or something. And the louder got louder and louder and louder. And my mom and I said, oh, well, those are helicopters. So mom, I don't know what a helicopter is. I said, it scared the hell out of me. I don't know what it is. And of course, I didn't use that language back then. I got my mouth washed out with soap and a good slap. But, uh, but anyway, the, uh, I kind of overgave my fears. I kind of got my interest a little bit. And the only chopper that I built well, I was back in 1956. I think I was about 16 years old back then. And that was the, um, the H-16 transporter. 
I'll show you that after we show the review of this. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to swing the cabin over and sh we're going to take a peek at the, uh, at the flying banana. And I'm going to show you what I'll get started on next and uh, what I'll be doing. And uh, so I'm going to keep you guys busy and keep myself busy too. Camera's always friendly. I know I am. So let's take again take a look at this uh, flying banana here. Okay, guys, we'll zoom in with the mighty camera right here. There she is right there, sitting on a piece of cardboard. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do a little switcheroo right here. I thought I was. I guess I got in a wooden plaque for it. I got to pick up a wooden plaque for this thing tomorrow. Anyway, guys, uh, this is uh, this is her right here, and we'll get a little tad a little closer, a little bit here. And you can see the details. This thing is a very detailed chopper. It's about 10 inches long. Not very big. If it was quarter at scale, it would be a pretty good size. We'll rotate this model around a little bit. You can see the detail done on this thing. And, uh, I like those big twin rotors this thing had. And this is the starboard side right here we're looking at. And, uh, it took a while to build this thing, fellas. This thing is, uh, it's pretty, uh, it's complicated in some respects. Not very many parts. But it goes together quite very, very reasonably well. And these rotary wing aircraft are, they're pretty, they're pretty popular. I've always liked the, the Flying Banana. It's one of the first choppers we used in the H-16 Chickasaw. H-21, uh, not H-21. H-19, the Chickasaw, or Whirlwind. They're about the first Mix Master, Mix, Mix Masters uh, choppers that came out. And uh, this is a nice kit goes together very, very well. And uh, they got the hobby shops nearest to your neck of the woods. They they're about uh, they run about forty bucks. I got this one for about twenty. And um, so it makes an excellent, excellent uh, addition to, um, to your helicopter collection. If you guys collect like helicopters, like this is the second helicopter I've built since 1956. And uh, so I'm going to go on the shelf next. And uh, there's the fit no fit issues at all on this. Around the canopy, you gotta do some light sanding around there to make it sure it's flush up against the fuselage. And uh, other than that, it goes together in a snap. And um, I enjoy this this little jewel of an aircraft. Choppers have a very significant part of history of aviation, and they're proven very successfully. On combat missions, reconnaissance missions, medevacs, transporting troops, and utility aircraft to use as well. And that'll be it. Okay, guys, uh, that's about it right here on the uh, H-21, the Flying Banana. I got her all done, and, uh, and I, I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. And the builds go on, and I got another one here I'll be showing you. And we'll swing this camera out of yours truly here and finish up the video, and I'll show you what I'll be, I'll be building my chopper collection. Okay, guys. Okay, fellas, here's what I'm building right now. Where the devil's the box at? 
Oh. This is an old test tester's hot kit. This is the um, the H43 B Husky Cayman. This is actually the predecessor of the Russian uh, chopper used on their on their vessels, except it's, uh, it's twin turbine. This only has single turbine. This was used very successfully uh, during the early parts of Vietnam, and used during the 1950s. And the picture right here, as you can see, as I get closer to it, guys, you can see uh, it looks like a T28, and it's rescuing the pilot. And uh, in the background, there's a bunch of troops back there. I don't know if it's the VC or it's us, the Marines of the 25th Infantry. You don't know. But it's Vietnam. So this is the Tester's Hawk kit. I don't think those kit's available no more. Maybe perhaps someday they may rebox this under the Ravel or uh, Glencoe or anybody. I know the Moses kid is not forgotten, so it's probably in dormant somewhere, floating around. So they keep dragging these things out of the closet once in a while and start producing them and reboxing them under a different manufacturer name. And uh, so that's there. This one here, it's not put together, guys. The only thing that's put together is, is the interior, but it hasn't been painted yet. I got to prime and paint. Here it is, right here, as you can see. It's 132 scale. It's it's big. And you can see the big old th uh, the four stabilizers in the back it's got. The clamshell doors operate. This thing was actually, uh, it wasn't, uh, this kit was by uh, another company, it's Ringo or something. Before Hawk got their hands on it. This thing was a gimmick model, it had a motor in it. And with the gears, they got gears in these rotors, and these rotors run on a motor. So, that's the gimmick model of that day. So, actually, they threw away the motor and everything on it. So, this is actually uh, what comes out of the kit. So, this is all not glued together. As you can see, I got a rubber band on here. Hold it together. Move the rubber band. This whole thing will fall apart like a, like a decomposed twig. So uh, that be I'll be getting hot of that after this video when it loads up. When I finish that, I'll probably be getting started on this one. This is a 1955 Ravel Sikorsky S55, which is known as the H19 Chickasaw. This was used throughout the, the Korean War campaign, and also was used in the United Nations too. Uh, this thing was, to my knowledge of ability, this was never used in Vietnam. By the time the Korean War was act virtually over with, they they more or less used these as uh, as a recon squadrons, training squadrons, utility aircraft, and they had more stuff for game that they were, uh, on the drawing boards they were bringing out. So this is the uh, Siskorsky, and the price back then was 89 cents. Back in those days, you can see the 89 right there. That's all, all back in those days, there was no such thing as fluctuating a price. That was a fixed price. And that's and that's how you tell how much they cost back in those days. Look at the box, 89 cents, you bought it. 89 cents, 1955 was a lot of money. It really was, kids. It was a lot of money. And, uh, Get 89 cents was very hard to get unless you earned it somehow. Okay, guys, this is another one I dragged out of the closet. This is the first chopper I built back in 1956. This is the H13, I think. 816? Yeah, the H16 uh, transporter. This here was. I know nothing about it. I have never seen these was as flying around when I was a kid. These actually were probably the uh, the successor to the flying banana. They used more like more more of these in, in the in the Arctic front than the uh, out, out Arctic conditions and and uh, also 
in deserts and things. They use them. This actually is a transport helicopter. It's like out of a Chinook. It's got a back door in the back of the fuselage. Ramp opens up. And you can get your jeeps there, tanks, and troops. So this thing was a very, very powerful helicopter for its day. Now I think this thing came off the drawing boards back in 1955, right after the Korean War. And uh, they more or less used that from 1955 up to 1960. So they were short, pretty well short lived for their day. I pulled these out of the closet that I had in my stash pile for many, many years. And uh, today I went to the hobby shop today to get some more building materials. I was running out of glue. And I bought the last bottle of um, Tamaya. I like that Tamaya glue. It's pretty good stuff, guys. I got about five bottles of it. Freddy supersedes me by a grocery store full. <laughs> Okay, I got this at the hobby shop there, guys. I I seen it in a lot of other hobby shops. Never bought it, so I gotta thank him by getting this one. This is the man in the missile. This is the F-104 Starfighter by Monogram or Vell. I think it is Vell. Yeah, immersion with Vell. You guys probably seen these a lot on the model shelves. You probably got them in your stash. It's all sealed. I haven't opened up this kit yet, so I'm going to take a look at it. They say it's a very wonderful kit to build. And uh, I'm not having decided if I'm going to go ahead and put Canadian markings on it or U.S. Air Force. I was going to U.S. Air Force. I see a lot of these fly all the time. They have a lot of problems with these things when they first came out. And uh, I guess Kelly Johnson designed this aircraft. And, uh, you got a huge engine built around a pilot. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like the GB. A Doolittle was flying back in 1932-33 during the Granville and Bendix races. Okay, guys, that's about all that's shaking right there. Uh, that's about it. So I'm going to be working on this Cayman chopper after I get put away this workhorse. And uh, that'll be that. So next video, we'll probably have another video coming up probably uh, by Friday or Saturday, I'll scare something up for you guys to look at and, and uh, probably show you some more update pictures of my uh, H-43, my, my Cayman Husky, and that'll be that. Okay, guys, time for me to get out of here right now, and uh, may God bless, and happy modeling, make Mama happy, enjoy this beautiful, hot, toasty summer, because it's the dog days of summer, which is August, and it ain't going to be too much longer until snowball comes around the corner. Oh boy, I dread that. We've had a very, very hot summer out here on Ohio land. And uh, to me, it's probably about the first hot summer I've had since 1986, 87. And uh, Ohio is very, very hot weather. Humid out here, hot. And you get those afternoon showers come down, which is a, kind of like a break. Showers stop. Clouds clear, the sun pops up, humidity comes back in. You feel like you're in a greenhouse, you can see the steam coming off the streets. So, that'd be that. Okay, guys, uh, I'd like to thank you guys very much for letting me bend your ear a little bit and show you this uh, build, final reveal of the uh, Atelier 1 second scale H21 Flying Banana. And uh, it's like a day signing off. God bless you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next video. So stay tuned Friday. We'll have something else for you guys. Uh, Dave missed one thing. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm out of here. Take care, fellas. God bless you.